Hey, it's Will with Sonduck Creative, and today I'm going to show you two different ways you can incorporate smoke into your projects in Photoshop. The first one is about rendering smoke and then strategically using it where we want it, and the other is going to be making our own smoke brush that we can draw with however we want. For that first one, it's really easy. Just make a new layer and then go to Filter, Render, Clouds, and it'll fill your whole canvas with clouds. If you happen to not like the pattern it gives you, you can always go back up to filter and hit it again, and it'll give you a whole new pattern. Set its blending mode to screen, and now while holding alt on your keyboard, make a blacked out layer mask. Get a soft brush and set its size to relatively big, and set its flow to about 30. Now with your color set to white, just brush some of those clouds back in. You can run it around the edges gently like this to make a smoky vignette, or you can add it wherever you think works. After I'm done with my base layer, I also like to lower the flow and the opacity and then fill in some spots that I think could use it. This one is a little more complicated, but it only takes a few moments and it's something that you can save and use on tons of different projects. The first thing you'll need is a picture of some clouds or smoke. I found this image on pexels.com for free. Feel free to go there to do the same or use any image you like. Take your lasso tool and find a cloud you like. Draw an outline around it and then hit Command or Control J to duplicate it. Now hide the background and go to your channels tab. Select the color channel that offers you the most contrast. And just so you know, it's almost always gonna be red, at least in my experience. Now drag that channel down here to make a copy of it. And now hit Command or Control L to bring up the levels window on your copy. Drag the slider so you can make it nice and dark and hide any colors or detail that we don't want. Now get your lasso again and make another outline around your cloud. Make sure not to include any of the white behind it and then right click and hit select inverse. Then hold command or control and hit delete to fill all of that in with black. Click on the RGB channel to select it and now command or control click the thumbnail of your copy to make this selection. Now just go back to your layers tab and duplicate this layer. Now if you get rid of everything else, you should be left with this nice semi-transparent cloud shape. To make sure it doesn't have any color left over, we're going to go to Image, Adjustments, Desaturate. Now press C for your crop tool and adjust the size of your canvas. Confirm it and then go to Edit, Define Brush Preset. You can name it whatever you want, but I'm just going to go with Smoke Base because we're not quite done yet. Now if we go back over to here, you'll see that it doesn't look quite right, and that's because we still need to tweak its settings a bit. Hit F5 on your keyboard for your brush settings. You can also find it in your window panel if that doesn't work for some reason. Go to Shape Dynamics and drag the size jitter all the way to the right. This will make your size vary a bit when you're brushing. And just so you know, anytime something says jitter in Photoshop, it means it's adding a little bit of randomness to whatever you're doing. Move your angle jitter as well, and this one is going to vary depending on the shape of your smoke, but just do some test lines and adjust accordingly. Go to Scattering and set your scatter to about 60. And the last one, go to Color Dynamics and increase the foreground background jitter. Also, by default, smoothing might be toggled on. Personally, I think it looks better without, but play around with your settings and decide for yourself. Drop the flow down to somewhere between 15 to 20%, and finally, hit this button here to save these settings and name it whatever you'd like. Now you can have fun adding smoke to your projects. Make sure to experiment with the opacity, flow, and colors of your brushes. Tweak them when you need it, make a bunch of different brushes if you want, that you can use in any situation, and have fun! Even though working on design projects may be a lot of fun, it's still incredibly time consuming and even challenging. To help you save time while still creating good work, we've got design templates for Photoshop which allow you to finish projects within minutes instead of hours. So if you want to start saving time now, start by checking out our links in the description below.